everyone knows this man, the great picture from the movies. But who was this man behind the makeup? Nobody really knows where this man came from or the tragedies of his life. We consider that this knowledge is essential to the understanding of his works. Thus, we're going to give it to you. Leo Charles Chaplin was born as Charles Spencer Chaplin at London, England on April 16th of 1889. Surrounded by an artistic-like family, Chaplin followed his parents' steps towards the life of music and the theater. Nevertheless, we have to say that his childhood wasn't as pleasant as it sounds. His father, Charles Chaplin, was a comic singer and actor who lived a troubled life. He divorced from Hannah, Charles' mother, when three years after their marriage began. As a father, he was not really present during his early years. He was arrested for his inability to provide for his children and later died of alcoholism when young Charlie was 10 years old. On the other hand, Charlie's mother, Hannah Chaplin, was also a performer. Known as the stage name of Lily Harlan, she made a name for herself in the area of light opera. She was remembered by Charlie for always being a kind, of, a kind and loving mother. Even through her mental breakdown in 1889, which led to her being sent to the Cane Hill Lunatic Asylum. Due to these issues, Charlie and his brother Sidney had to fend for themselves at charity homes and workhouses. Then, as Charlie seemed to have inherited his parents' talent on the stage, he started his artistic career at a juvenile group called the eight Lancashire lads and became known as great tap dancer. In 1910, Charlie traveled to the United States with Fred Carnot's Bodeville Group. In 1913, he joined the Keystone Film Company, where he earned $150 a week. Given his success, he started negotiations with other producers and after Keystone, he signed with the Eastern A Company in 1915, where he earned $1,250 a week. Three years later, he joined First National. He signed her first million contract. Time in which he produced films such as The Immigrant in 1917 or The Pound in 1915. Later, in 1919, he formed the United Artists, a company that enabled the stars to distribute their films without the studio interference, with D.W. Griffith, Douglas Fairbanks, and Mary Pickford. During this time, Chaplin produced films such as The Kid or The Circus. Then, he got interested in politics, so the FBI began compiling a fall on Chaplin's activity, focusing on his relationship with figures such as Upton Singler and Albert Einstein. Subsequently, in 1940, he published a film exposing the dangers of fascism, The Great Dictator. He ignored the various threats of publishing his film. The alarming messages referred from the United Artists, he recalls, but I was determined to go ahead, for Hitler must be laughed at. During the Second World War, Chaplin was a member and activist of the American Committee for Russian War Relief. After its end, he was reopened a fall by the House of an American Activities Committee as they started investigating public figures with left-wing political views. Then, they had read it a 1,900 fall on his, on his without his acknowledgement, and as he traveled to London, they got Chaplin banned from the United States. En el gran dictador, por ejemplo, es clarísimo que no basta con el poder, no basta con tener el reconocimiento, siempre hay algo más. He responded to his exile by making the film A King in New York in 1957, where an exile king suffers in America due to investigations made to him. This film was not released in the U.S. as Chaplin was accused of being pro-communist. During his exile, he wrote his autobiography, My Autobiography, 1964, and directed the movie A Countess from Hong Kong, 
in 1966. In 1972, he was invited again to the United States to receive an award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and, finally, was allowed to release a king in New York. Uh, the movie that I like the most is Modern Times, which shows precisely that anxiety of the modern man in society. Uh, I also like The Kid. It's a little bit too sentimental for my taste, but it's really good. He began to deal with the issues of that moment in society, with, which was modern times. That is my favorite movie. In the end, he died in Switzerland on December the 25th, 1977. Mm -hmm.